What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and today it is of course Wednesday. So that means that it is Real Talk Wednesday. So I'm going to get through this. Before you guys even ask about the hair, I'm going to tell you. But first let me tell you guys this. Um, if I look a little combobulated, discombobulated, weird, out of order or what have you, my eyelashes right here are falling down. I've had them on for like three weeks so I need to replace them because the my lashes are naturally growing out, so that's one eye. Um, and I'm hot. I had to retouch my makeup up. I had to take off. Let me tell you, I've had a very long day from the start of 7 a.m. From getting my kids ready to school to being at court at 8.30 with my son, who's 17. He had to be in court. When you act up in school here and do something, they will send your ass to court, okay? So I had to do that. Then when I came back, I had to take apart my grandson's crib and I had to get a U-Haul truck and I had to help my kids pack it, meaning my daughter, um, Tati, and my son. Um, I had to help them move the stuff in. Then I had to drive the U-Haul truck. I had to help them unload it. Then I had to take certain things to the laundromat for my daughter Tatiana because these couch cushions, I wanted to wash them for her. So I wanted to bring them to a really big um, you know, washing machine. So I have my own wash and dryer, but I needed like an industrial size. So yeah, and I sat at the laundry. I've had like a freaking long overdrawn day from sweating down my back to removing my wig while we were moving items. Yes, it was so fucking hot outside that I took my wig off and I really didn't care because it was too hot and I was like, the hell with being pretty right now. I just want to get this over with. I'm dying of heat. So yes, that's my day. Long, long, long. So the hair that I'm actually rocking is from, oh my god, I will, Ula Hair, and I will put it for you guys below. This is the second review that I'm doing for them. I actually did one probably like nine months ago or eight months ago when my grandson was first born. I did a review, and the hair is actually lovely, and they sent me some more hair. This time it's 16 inches, and I hope you guys can see it on camera, but it is red, and it's entirely all red, except for the roots. I don't do red roots, um, but I will... I have, I did record the entire process and the hair is really pretty. If you guys know me, I love loose wavy hair opposed to curly. I mean, I've just gotten into the curly, so I really don't do a lot of the curly. But I do it now. I've never, excuse me, let me rewind that and rephrase that. I didn't do a lot of curly hair back then on my first prior channels because it was just a lot of maintenance and it was kind of like scary to me. But now I love it, but I love more the loose wavy because it's just so much more manageable and it's looser. And I just really, really love loose wavy hair. So that is my favorite and this is what that is. So I will be posting up a video for that. But yes, so let's get into this real talk, guys. Um, so I don't have to talk you guys' ears off so much. And then... Okay, so guys, you already know, if you want a real talk session about yourself or your situation or you need some advice, you can always email me at muffinismylovers2012. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, so that I know that it is an official real talk video and that I can look into the, the email, address, um, email, actually. So, for this week's, I'm going to be doing three. And, of course, um, I do like for people to rename themselves. If you don't want your real name to be exposed on Real Talk, go ahead and rename yourself in the email. You can let me know. You can call me such and such, which will be a lot helpful to me because for some reason I'm running out of ideas of names. And I really don't know why, but I just am. Okay, so hi, April. I'm a really big fan, and I'm in high school. I'm a boy, by the way, and I would like your opinion on something. The name for me in the video is going to be Jack. So I have a cousin. Her name is going to be Maya, who is older than me but only by a year and we have been a group since we were babies me her and her brother she has been the good christian girl from what i know up until a few weeks ago since we were little kids i would go to their house in the suburbs suburbs every few weeks or months out of the year and we would hang out there and play video games and talk and just be kids i would usually go on days where i had monday off of school or something like that i would go on a friday night and then i would stay until sunday or sometimes monday afternoon Usually one day would be cool, but then the next day we would be fighting because me and Maya have different opinions. Mind you, 
at a point in time, Maya and her family stayed at my house with me and my mother because at the time they didn't have a house. And we still fought over different things like gay rights, which I support, support wholeheartedly, and she does not, and religion. It got so heated one time that I ended up getting jumped in my house by Maya and her brother. So when they moved out, I stopped talking to her for a very long time, and I would only see her at family reunions and things. We ended up making we ended up making up, which we do after every fight, and being cool again. Now fast forward a few years. Maya now has a boyfriend, and this is her first boyfriend. So I go over to her house during summer, and this was a week ago, and this was a few weeks ago. We are cool for a few days until Sunday night. First thing, I'm like, let's go to Walgreens because I want a soda. And she's like, okay. And we walk down to Walgreens. Mind you, the night before, her boyfriend called me a faggot and said I had and said I had a death wish if I came out into the streets because I called him a fake ass thug. She had been on the phone, Maya had been on the phone with her boyfriend back and forth since we walked and went to Walgreens. And we saw him coming back from there on our way back from Walgreens. Anyway, we met up with him and he ends up talking about selling weed and how he's only how he only has dime bags and they need to sell it and how he needs to smoke and all this and he's joking around about not going to school anymore and dropping out and stuff. I'm like, nah, I don't mess around with people like that and I don't think that's funny either. So Maya basically is fine with it, which pissed me off. Second thing, she defended his ways and said that I don't know where he comes from and all that crap. When they live in the suburbs, and it ain't no ghetto suburbs. So anyway, we ended up literally arguing through the night about rights and laws and how selling drugs is illegal and why she should be okay with that. She ends up saying, being gay is disgusting. I say to her back, but it's not illegal, like selling drugs. And she says, well, being gay should be illegal. That hit me at my core and said, at my core. And so basically when I got home, I completely cut her off from my life. I blocked her from everything, including Facebook, which I don't even use. I even blocked her phone number. So I'm asking you, should I even, should I unblock her and be friends again? Or should I just leave it like it is? Looking forward to your reply. Love you lots. So Jack, so basically Jack and his childhood cousin, who they've been close like this, um, you know how it is. One minute you're close, the next minute you're not. You're a kid, so, you know, it is what it is. But they, they get into their little disputes and things of that nature. It's just normal, you know, with kids. And they're back at it again. Like, basically, this time around, he has blocked her from all his social media as well as his phone number. And she's saying, she's saying really negative things to him, such as being gay should be illegal. Because she's trying to defend her boyfriend who sells weed. Which is still a drug. You sell some illegal shit. Now the North States is not illegal. Not illegal here. Well, it is illegal here, but we got lots of dispensaries. So, mm, a girl be at them. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah. So he wants to know should he be friends with her again because she said she's saying these mean, harmful things. Not harmful, but harsh. And they can be harmful. And that is his cousin, and they they break up and they make up kind of like kind of sort. Meaning they fight. And then they, they, they make up. And then they fight and then they make up. But sometimes things just cannot be mended, unfortunately. Now, I'm all for being a family union, you know what I'm saying? Or being the best of friends and shit like that. And making up till you break up again and then making up again. I'm, I'm like, I'm all with all of that cool stuff. It's fine with me. Um, however, I've said this in many videos before. Family be the one family be the one okay family be the one that will bring your ass down in a quick flash unfortunately and even if it's your family yes it's nice to forgive people it doesn't matter if they're family or not if you really care for them however you cannot go around saying harsh things to people and yeah that's your boyfriend maya um however he's selling drugs He's selling weed and you're defending him and being gay should not mean that it should be illegal what that to me is so like wrong to say i really find that so disheartening and i find it like so mean that's just so fucking mean to say to anybody and there's probably people that are watching that feel like oh gay is um is sin or what have you here's my thing with the whole gay issue 
First of all, I let people be who you are. You're a person. Be who you are. I'm not going to judge you on if your sexual preference, your racial complexion, um, how much money you got. I'm not going to judge you about that. I'm going to judge you on who you are as a person, as a personality. So gay people have rights and gay people are people. And it's sad that they call them gay because gay people, gay people. They're people, okay? So what you don't hear people going around saying straight people, straight people. We don't get called straight people, so I really don't think, feel like they should be called gay people. That's what their sexual preference is, yes. But that word that her boyfriend used, the word faggot, is like the worst word in the world to me. Um, next to the curse word fuck, faggot is like a horrible word. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that people even say that still, but it's so just like so a nasty word to say to anybody because of their sexual preference. Like, I really hate that word, and it's so disheartening, and it's just so mean and nasty and disrespectful. So for her boyfriend to say that to Jack, and Maya went along with it and saying, oh, being gay, because it seems like to me, she's just going along with whatever her boyfriend says. Because if her boyfriend was all about the gay life, and he supports gay marriage and so forth, she would be down with that too. So she's, for one, a follower, okay? She's a follower. And should you forgive her and unblock her? Here's what I think, okay? This is, this is just my thing. Unblock her. Unblock her. But don't reach out to her. See if she reaches out to you and wants to apologize. Don't go out of your way trying to reach out to her and try to get an apology out of her. I would like to see her reach out to you on her own and apologize to you. So unblock her so she has the opportunity to do that. But don't unblock her and say, hey, Maya, you know, what's up or what's good? You know, you pissed me off. You don't need to tell her any of that because I'm pretty sure she's well aware that she's fucking pissed you off. And she said things that are really uncalled for. You don't have to do any of that, Jack. But what I would do is I would unblock her. I would definitely unblock her because she's still your family. And even though I have blocked some of my family members from my social media because they're assholes, you know what I mean? I've, I've blocked my oldest son. My oldest son. We don't speak. And um, you're not going to go on my social media disrespecting me. So I block you. Um, however, unblock her just to see what she has to say about her actions and her behavior. So I would definitely unblock her. I'm not saying forgive her, okay? However, God always says you can forgive. You can forgive a person. You can always forgive her. Excuse me, let me rewind that. You can forgive her. But it doesn't mean that you have to fuck with her still, okay? And I say this with a with a, hey, a long spoon, meaning my son has said so many disrespectful things to me, my eldest son who lives in New York, that if he ever decides to apologize to me ever again in life, I will forgive him because he's someone that I love. However, I'm going to mess, I'm not fucking with you like that. And if I do, it's with a long handled spoon, okay? Meaning I'm not really fucking with you like that at all, but I'm still your mother and I love you, but I'm not going to get into your life with you. I'm not going to like like bond with you like that because you've done this on several occasions so you can always forgive someone but you don't have to forget and just because you forgive someone does not mean that you gotta fuck with them forgiving people always helps your own conscience okay and I say that really wise loosely because I have forgiven a lot of people in my lifespan people that write shit on social media and they think that I don't know about it Please, trust and believe. A bitch knows. I fucking know. I know you be talking about me, but you know what I'm saying? That's what it is for you. That's what it is. If that make you happy and that make your day spin around like the fucking earth, then go ahead and so do that. Be that. But just because I forgive you, I ain't really fucking with you like that. Like, yeah, we can talk here and there. You can hear from me, so and forth and so forth. But I'm not really cool with you like I used to be. So always forgive somebody because... You don't want to go through your life being hateful and being angry with the person, okay? Because it's really eating you up inside. And why would you want to eat yourself up inside? And why would you want to make your own self miserable? So, go ahead. Forgive that person. But you don't have to be the best of friends with them. If you see her at a family reunion, hey, Maya, la, 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 what's up? Nice to see you, blah, blah, blah. And carry on with your fucking day. But I would definitely unblock her because you know why? She's going to look at it and like, oh, Jack's being childish. Oh, he feeling some sort of way. Never let anybody see you sweat, Jack. And don't let her know that she got the best of you because you blocked her. A lot of motherfuckers I don't even block. Because if you want to talk shit to me, go right ahead. You keep coming back for me. And you keep making new accounts on doing this and doing that. To 
come to me. I ain't going to block you because you know what? I must be of some importance to you because you're going out of your way to reach out to me. And I don't even give a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? I could care less. So, yeah, unblock her. Forgive her. But you ain't got to fuck with her like that. You grown. You more old now. You guys are in your own lifestyle. And let me tell you something, Jack. It don't matter what she say about being gay. If that's your sexual preference, then that's your sexual, sexual preference. Be happy and be who you are. Never let nobody tear you down for what you like and what you prefer. Because who said that we have to be one certain way? Everybody, some, a lot of people are so holier than thou. I'm not knocking anybody from being holier than thou. However, I say it like this. If it's a person, let them be who they are. People are people. Let them be who they are. We cannot tell a person how to be in life. You know what I'm saying? Who to be. You got to let and allow people to be who they are. If one of my kids were gay, I would not care because those are my kids. As long as they respect themselves and be respectful to others, then, you know what I'm saying, you are still a person. So, the hell with Maya. Forgive her, unblock her, and, but don't reach out to her. Let's see what she has to say to you. Family is the ones that could bring you down a lot of times in certain situations, and it's unfortunate. But it just bees like that sometimes, unfortunately. It bees like that. Mm -hmm. So, let Jack know what you guys think of his cousin Maya. And what would you do in the situation? Okay, so the next one, and this is a short one. This is like a par, it's like a paragraph long. Okay, hey April, my subject, my subject is about my boyfriend and I. I recently had a baby in May, and my boyfriend wants to marry me in February, but my mother doesn't like him simply because he left a bad taste and impression on her. I spoke to my father about it. But my father told me not to mention anything to my mother. My question is, should I tell her and face negative comments or keep it to myself and run off and get married? So we're going to call her um, Courtney. So Courtney has had a baby in May by her boyfriend. And Courtney's mom does not like her boyfriend because he's left a bad impression and a sour taste on her. And Courtney's father is saying, don't even say nothing to your mother. Just live your life, basically. Um, so she wants to know she should just run off and get married. First of all, let me tell you... Mm, myself first of all let me tell you Courtney I'm not really sure what the sour taste and impression was that your boyfriend left on your mother however if it was something really negative like cheating selling drugs he's a crackhead or something like that that might be a reason you might want to look that over however if she's just being a picky mom like me because I don't like anybody and my mother was the same way she didn't like nobody that I dated um I'm gonna be honest with you I'm going to just be honest with you. Now, first of all, my ex-husband, my mother liked him. She really did up until the very end. She liked him. When I say the very end, I'm talking about the last situation that happened between he and I. The last. And it was a doozy. I really don't talk about it much, but let's just get to the point and say that he was drunk and he got physical and I had to knock his ass the fuck out. Anyway, um, so I don't really know what the impression he left on her, but if she's just being a picky mother like me and like my mom, um, then sometimes you might want to just like listen to what she says. However, when I got married to my ex-husband, I we went we got married in Disneyland. And nobody knew about it in my family because his mother didn't want him to marry me. And I wish I would have listened to his own fucking mother. I should have never married him. But my mom didn't know about it. Nobody was invited except for my kids. Our kids were there. My kids. Nobody was invited. It was just us. I bought the dresses and everything. And we ended up not using that. So I have like this brand new wedding dress in my garage in the plastic still. Tag still on it. And no, I'm not going to wear it to my, my next wedding because that would be just so tacky. And I don't even think my fat ass could fit into it anyway. But let me tell you, I, 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 I told my mother like a day or two afterwards and I wish I wouldn't have. But she was happy because that's when she liked him. That's when she liked my ex-husband. But should you run off and get married? No, I really don't think so because you're grown. You're grown. And you don't really need to hide anything from your mother. Regardless of how she feels about your boyfriend or your lifestyle, why would you run off? You are grown. Be honest with your mother because that's being honest with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't hide anything because if my daughter was to tell me that her and her boyfriend ran off and got married, do you know how hurt I would be and upset I would be? I would be really, really upset and hurt about it. Like, damn, you didn't even invite me. Or, damn, I wasn't worthy enough for you to inform me. Or, damn, like, what the hell? You just couldn't tell me? 
Like, why are you keeping things from me? As a parent, we don't like things. And I'm pretty sure that, Courtney, you have a child. You wouldn't want your child to run off and get married and not let you know. You know what I'm saying? So regardless of the negative comments that your mother is going to say, you still need to tell her because that's your mother and you want to be honest with her. And, of course, she's going to say something negative. Sometimes nobody is good enough for our kids. We always feel like that, like... I just feel like, oh yeah, you're not good enough for my daughter. Yeah, you're not good enough for my son. Yeah, you're not good enough for my daughters. That's just how we feel because we're parents and we're so overprotective. So we're always going to have something negative to say and positive to say about the person. Sometimes it's like in the medium. It's, you know, like it levels itself out. Sometimes it's just like a whole whirlwind and it doesn't. But I really honestly don't feel like you should go running off getting married without telling your mother. Your dad already knows, and I'm not sure if your mother and father are together. However, if they are if they are, or if they're not, I still don't think it's right to not involve your mother. You, you don't have to invite her. You don't have to tell her to make the wedding plans. You don't have to do any of that, but you can at least let her know, hey, I'm going to marry Kurt, and this is what we're gonna do. Um, you don't have to be rude, and I would advise you as a mother, don't be fucking rude. But let her know how you feel about the person and you love him and this is what's going to make you happy. And of course she's going to say negative things and just let her know as a mother, I really wish mom that you wouldn't say those things about Kurt because I really do truly love him and I just want you to be happy for me. I understand how you feel but I want you to be happy for me and this is going, this is, and we're going to get married. And I know you probably don't want to come to the wedding but if you do, I would really love for you to be there to be at their wedding like I really wish that my mom was at my wedding but you know what at, at the circumstances it was just like it got chaotic and I was like fuck it let's just go ahead we be in Disney World we are gonna get married and we gonna do this yeah I wish I would have known he was a biter then okay but anyway let your mom know and let Courtney know guys if that were you were in that situation and your mother was ragging on your man would you tell her that she was going to get married um i don't think her father was right for saying not to to say anything because that's her mom and we have a right to know even if you're grown we're still your mother if you're 25 years old we're still your mother don't think that you don't have to listen to us and respect us because we're your mother you only have one mother and I, by all means when she's dead and gone what you gonna do you gonna wish that you would have told her certain things so don't fuck it up just just don't fuck it up. Okay, you guys. Last real talk, okay? Hey, doll. I love your real talk sessions. I'm obsessed. So, you can call me Ashley. So, I'm a black girl and I'm married to a Mexican. He's 15 years older and we met when I was 18. We've been together for 13 years and we have two children together. He was my first boyfriend, so when we first got together, I was inexperienced with sex and was kind of content with what he did, kind of. However, as the years went on and I learned more from talking with friends and family, I started to want more from sex. My husband is only five inches hard. He lasts five to ten minutes, and I have never had an orgasm from him. I have complained and asked for us to spice it up or try different things so that I can be fulfilled. However, he doesn't listen. I wouldn't mind the fact that he's small or doesn't last long if he would return for a second round. However, once he comes, he's knocked out for the night. He says it's my fault because I'm too tight and that one round exhausts him. I will suggest he try different moves that I like, but he won't do them and will instead, will instead do things I don't like. He says he has done them to different girls and they liked it. I tell him that I'm not them, however, he still doesn't listen. I have brought up using toys once he, once he comes so, I have brought up using toys once. He, once, he comes so that I can finish, but he said, what, I have brought up using toys once he comes so that I can finish and pleasure myself, but he says that uh, that goes against his culture and that he doesn't want us using them. And he also said that something is wrong with me that I can't come because everyone else he's been with has come. I finally got so fed up that I bought a bullet and used it by myself and I finally had an orgasm. I let him know and he was so pissed. Now he judges me and says it's like I'm cheating. What should I do? I want to keep using my toy because I don't want to go the rest of my life never having orgasms because of his pride. 
Plus, he won't listen to any suggestions that I give. What do you think? Give up the toy to keep peace and just suffer in silence? Whoa. So Ashley is 13 year, um, 15 years younger than her Mexican husband, or boyfriend, that she's been with 13 years and they have two children. Plus, the motherfucker is five inches hard. And he only lasts five to ten minutes. And he's not doing anything out of the ordinary to sexually please her. So she went ahead and got herself a toy that he feels is against his culture. And she's finally had an orgasm. So she wants to know what should she do. Should she give up the toy and just live in silence and never have an orgasm again? Or keep hold and keep the peace? Whoa. First of all, Ashley, I'm going to tell you like this. And I'm going to just be real. First of all, I got me a bullet. I got me a vibrator. I got me a glass dildo. My my man is not here right now, so a bitch needs some type of comfort. So I we on the phone. We do talk dirty to each other. And I don't really need the toys because I got these, okay? These. I don't really need a toy. Oh, you need is some imagination, like SpongeBob says. Imagination and a good hand, girl. Mm. But anyway, okay, listen. Um, first of all, I'm I'm not, I'm not, I don't really know how you deal with it. Um, five inches is not a lot. Five to ten minutes is like, okay, bullshit. Does he go down? Meaning, does he eat your stuff? Because if he's not eating your stuff, he's just doing some lame missionary, ordinary shit out of the ordinary. Then he's not doing anything. You are giving him suggestions, but he's not doing it. You need to really have a sit down with him and let him know that you are so unsatisfied with the sexual pleasure non-pleasures that you're getting from him and let him know the reason why you're using using your bullet a bullet is cool but let me tell you something it is nothing like feeling a man on top of you with your legs wrapped around his back clenching his back scratching out his back moaning to the top of your fucking lungs in pain and fucking coming i'm sorry but i just need to call my boyfriend right now okay mm. for real i like the toys um to a certain extent but I like, you know what I'm saying, I could do without them. They're, they're really no big thing to me. I could care less because I have my hands. You know, I got Sally right here and then Jamie, she be sometimes like, now nah, I'm busy. But you know what I'm saying, I talk to my man on the phone. And you know, it's, it's sex, phone sex. It's phone sex. Everybody has it, okay? So don't front like you don't. However, I'm glad that you fulfilled your own self because what you could have done, Ashley, is you could have stepped out on him and found some big dick nigga, some big dick man, that was really packing and really knew how to put it down. Ooh, child, I want to pick up the phone right now, okay? Um, yes. <laughs> okay, so I don't... I don't really know how to come back at this. What I would tell him basically is, listen, babe, the reason for the toy, don't tell him he got a little dick, okay? Don't tell him that. And you may not think he got a little dick because that's the first and only dick you've ever had, so you really don't know. And I'm not saying go out there and cheat on him because he got a little dick and you've heard different stories and you know that he's got a little dick. Um, we all know that now. Don't let him know that he's got a little dick. Um, don't do that. Um, I've done that before to my one of my to my daughter's father. I told him he had a little dick because he did. It was like the size of a chapstick. I don't even know how you made a baby with that. But he thought he was. Here's the thing: when you do things in the bedroom, like oh, 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 you're moaning and you're you're build boosting their ego and stuff. That's not helping them any. Okay, and I've learned that if they got a little dick and they don't know how to stroke it and they don't know how to fuck and they don't last. Don't be in the bed with your legs wide open, moaning, oh, Rike, oh, suave. Don't be in there doing that shit because you're just boosting their ego and they feel like they're doing some shit. Be like me, how I used to be with my ex-husband because um, it was a point where I didn't want to have sex with him no more, no matter how good it used to be. He would just be like, it's not good. So when you when you not in the bed moaning and you just quiet because don't fake the funk. For real, because if you're faking the funk, they're going to feel like they're doing something. And if they ain't putting it down and they ain't doing shit, then let it be known. Listen, you don't know how to fuck. Trust and believe a girl has told a couple people that before. When you have a little dick and you can't fuck, don't build their ego. It doesn't matter if you've been with them for 14, 15 years or you're married to them. If they can't fuck and they've got a little dick, you need to be honest and say, listen. We need to work on something. The reason why I have this toy is because you're not making me come and have an orgasm. I'm going to just tell you like this. Put some porno on. Suck that little dick of his. Get him riled up. Make him eat your stuff. 
and get freaky with him. Like, I'm all for the freaky shit. I have to let him know, listen, you are really not working it. And you don't have to say to him like that, but listen, babe, I would like to try out new things. I would like to really be pleased. I would like to try out new things. We've been together for so long. I don't want our sex life to get boring. I feel like it's getting boring, and I want to do different things. I want to do other things. I want to play around. I want to have more foreplay. I want to watch pornos. I want to get a little kinky and freaky. And whatever you do is your business, but don't keep gassing him up. And don't put the toy away, because let me tell you something, Ashley. If you don't have an orgasm, bitch, is no reason to fuck, okay? And I'm just playing it simple like that. There is no reason. Having an orgasm is the best thing. Um, it's not even the best thing, though. There are some things that are better than having an orgasm. But, I don't know. You have to open your mind to these things. What would you guys do if you had a man who was 5 inches long, lasted 5 to 10 minutes, and he got mad at the fact that you got a, a toy because you needed something to please yourself? Cool child. Mm. So, on that note... Yes, you guys. I hope you enjoy, enjoy Real Talk this evening or today. All the information for the hair as well as... I don't even know. Oh, if you want a wig made by me, you can always hit me up at goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com, which is also posted for you guys below. I do specialize in custom wigs as well as in-stock wigs. However, my in-stock wigs, people go in there after I say and they're like, there's none left. Okay, so they sell out fast. So there's like a few up there right now for sale. But there will be some new units. And as always, stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on a new video coming soon.